Okay, we're gonna do heart anatomy, but do this through a paper puzzle tutorial. And we're going to identify the chambers, valves, and vessels of the heart using words and definitions and images, so illustrations and radiographs. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So to do this, we have this envelope. I have this envelope, and inside this envelope, I dump out a bunch of things like pictures and words and stuff. So I separate these things out on a table, spread them out a little bit more, and on one side, I end up seeing some pictures, and I spread them out and see some illustrations, radiographs, and I'm like, okay, let's see if I can make sense out of this. And I go over here to the words, and I'm like, all right, let's spread these out a little bit more and the ones at the top are more words and the bottom are definitions and the words at the top hmm there I see that there's heart chambers and there's heart valves and there's heart vessels so maybe if I go back over and then there's all those definitions if I go back over to these pictures and spread them out I'm like oh there's heart chambers there's heart valves and there's some vessels of pictures and I take the other ones and I put them all in that pile so now I have three piles and I take a look and I say okay let's take all of these and go shing and put all those labels with the pictures and I'm going to line them up at the top and then I'm going to take all these definitions and one by one place them where I think in the pile they should go and now what I'm going to do is put them all together in three piles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to place them out of the way for a moment and place these out of the way for a moment so that we can focus on this so I'm going to put this up here I've got left ventricle and left atrium and right atrium and right ventricle. So let me put those like that, okay? Showing those chambers and I'll put these over here. So then I take a look at this picture and I've got these, all these are just different pictures and I've actually even put like illustrations together and radiographs together. But this one here, when I take a look at it, I see there is the left ventricle. Also, it's the color red, which shows oxygenated blood. So I'm gonna place that picture right there. This one here, that is showing the left atrium because there's oxygenated blood there. So I'll put this right here. I've got two other pictures. And so when I put these beside each other, I can see that is also an atrium, but it's the right atrium. And by process elimination, there's the right ventricle. And these being in blue is important because the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood, sends it to the right ventricle, which then pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygen. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs, sends it down to the left ventricle, which goes chunk and pumps that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So now let's take a look. So we've got right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Let's take a look at these pictures here, okay? And so here we have some radiographs uh, that are showing. So this picture here, let's see here, okay. This one here is showing um, an axial CT and what I do is I take a look and I see that this is the chamber that is on the right. Now the challenge with looking at axial CT imaging is it's always viewed from foot to head. So this is posterior because there's a spinous process. That's anterior because there's the sternum and the ribs are flanking either side with the lungs in the middle. So this is the right side of the image. This is the left side of the image. And I always think of this as if I've got the picture, I'm gonna shake hands so if I have it like this, I take my right hand and shake this patient's right hand. This is the right side of the patient. And the most right chamber of the heart is our right atrium, okay? Now I take a look at this one and I'm like, okay, well, let me do this one first, okay? So this one here, I then take a look at a chamber and it is the most posterior chamber of the heart. And so this is now where the left and rights of the atria and ventricles um, are topographically, clinically, radiographically very important to know. The most posterior chamber of the heart is the left atrium. And you're like, well, if that's the right atrium and that's the left atrium, they're really, you know, it doesn't look so left and right. Um, but this is more right and this is more left. And anyways, that's part of the thing you remember is the left atrium is always the most posterior chamber. And the chamber associated with it is the left ventricle because it forms the left border of the heart and the apex. So there's our left ventricle. Now by process elimination, this picture is showing the right ventricle. Now this cross section from a netter slide 
shows that chamber of the heart that is touching the sternum. And the most anteriorly located chamber of the heart is that right ventricle because it basically, its surface touches the sternum. So now that we have a bunch of these um, images that show like definition. So this one says forms the posterior surface of the heart. Well, that's the left atrium because it's the most posteriorly oriented chamber. This next one says receives oxygenated blood from pulmonary circulations. Well, that is also actually left atrium. Maybe these are in order. Let me mix them up a bit as if you would be doing them uh, because the left atrium gets the oxygenated blood, okay? This one pumps oxygenated blood through the aortic valve. Well, that is the left ventricle because that's gonna pump blood from the left ventricle through the aortic valve. How about this one right here? Um, forms the anterior surface of the heart and touches the sternum. Well, that's definitely our right ventricle. Shing, like that one. How about this one? Forms the right border of the heart. Well, that is our right atrium because it's the one that forms this right border of the heart. How about receives deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava and coronary circulation, systemic and coronary circulations. That's also the right atrium from superior and inferior vena cava and the coronary artery. Forms the left border of the heart and apex. Well, that's our left ventricle. Shing. How about this one? Collects blood from tissues below the diaphragm. Well, that's gonna be your inferior vena cava. So I'm gonna put that over there. That's gonna come with that one. So this one says pumps deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary valve. Shing. Deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery. So there we have now our four chambers of the heart by name and abbreviation, RA, RV, LA, LV, by illustration with color coding of type of blood through axial or cross-section imaging and through some definitions. Sound cool? So now let me do this. I'm just gonna put these together in a pile. So there's our chambers. Let me do this. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna push that over out of the way. And now let's do valves next. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so here's our valve. So let's start with our tricuspid valve over here. And then let's go like in the cardiac cycle, the pulmonary valve, and then the bicuspid valve and the aortic valve. Let me bring this down here for a moment. Um, and so the tricuspid valve is also called the right atrioventricular or AV valve, pulmonary valve, bicuspid or mitral valve or left AV valve, and then our aortic valve. And we call them semilunar because they kind of look like that. Um, and so sometimes say pulmonary semilunar valves are just pulmonary valve, um, good either way. All right, so now we have a picture right here. This shows, this shows a valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle. That is our bicuspid or mitral valve. This one here shows a valve coming from the left ventricle and going into the aorta. That is going to go over there, okay? This next one is showing the tricuspid valve and it's between the right atrium and right ventricle. So there's our tricuspid valve and by process elimination, there's our pulmonary valve that comes from the right ventricle into the pulmonary circulation. So we've got some pictures here now. Do, do, do. So some of these are from a superior view where they've taken the atria off and some of them are cross section. All right, so let me do this. I'm gonna put this in, in the position we'll see in imaging. And then this one right here. Okay, so let's take a look at this valve here. This is a superior view of the heart and we've taken the right and left atria and removed them like taking the lid off of a container, the atria are gone. And this valve is one of the two semilunar valves and it's the most posteriorly oriented, that's important. And we can see coronary vessels coming off. That is our aortic valve because the aortic, just above the aortic valve is where the coronary arteries come off. Then this semilunar valve must be the pulmonary. And it is because it's the most anterior. Now here we have two other pictures that show valves, both going between atria and ventricles. So let's look at this one first. 
Okay, so here we have the right atrium and there's the right ventricle. Okay, and between the two is the tricuspid valve. And then here we have the bicuspid valve, which is between the most posteriorly oriented chamber, left atrium, and the apex and left border of the heart, left ventricle. It's our mitral valve. So let's do this, and this, and this, and this, okay? And now let's go through these little definitions and see where they might go, okay? This one closes during diastole and makes S2. Oh boy, now we've got to remember, what is systole and what is diastole? Well, systole in medicine, in physiology, there is atrial diastole and systole and ventricular diastole and systole. Systole means contraction of the heart chamber. Diastole means relaxation. In medicine, whenever we talk about systole or diastole, the assumption is always the ventricle. So it closes during diastole when the ventricles relax and makes S2. Well, S2 is either the pulmonary semilunar valve or the aortic semilunar valve. So let's put it over here for now. I, uh, I think there's going to be another one of those. Oh, closes during diastole and makes S2. So there's the pulmonary valve because the ventricles relax during diastole and the closing of the pulmonary and aortic valve is what makes S2. It opens during diastole. So during diastole, when the ventricles are relaxing and the semilunar valves are closing, that's when our tricuspid and bicuspid valves open. Opens during diastole. That's when those two occur. And so let's do this. So this one then says opens during systole. So when the ventricles contract, kachunk, the pressure inside the ventricle is higher than what's inside the uh, distal vessel, and it's the increase and uh, superseding of the pressure within the ventricle that forces blood through this valve. So the pulmonary and aortic semilunar valves both open during systole. Let's do that. So both the semilunar valves, pulmonary and aortic, open during systole, but they close during diastole, making S2, which means that the uh, AV valves both open during diastole and they both close during systole and that's what makes S1. Lub, dub, lub, dub. Okay, so there are our valves. Let's put these all together and make one pile and push that out of the way, okay? <laughs> and then let's take our last one, which are showing vessels associated. There's pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins, superior vena cava, pulmonary capillaries, aorta, the IVC. Okay, so let's do superior vena cava and inferior vena cava over here. Let's put, um, the next one is gonna be pulmonary arteries. And then the next one after that is going to be pulmonary capillaries and then pulmonary veins and an aorta. So we put these in order like this because the superior vena cava, okay, the superior vena cava is responsible for, well, let's go through that. Let me put these definitions over here and let's take these pictures and kind of jumble them up a little bit and... Here's one here that shows a really big vessel coming out from the left ventricle and above making that arc. That's the aorta. It's red because it's oxygenated blood. Okay. This one shows a blue vessel coming into the right side of the heart and it's bringing in deoxygenated blood. That's our inferior vena cava. So if we have an inferior vena cava, we must have a superior vena cava. But now I have two pictures here. Which is which? Well, woo. This picture here shows the superior vena cava and this shows something else. So let's put superior vena cava there. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. This is showing the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries because it's pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs. This one here is showing pulmonary veins which is bringing um, oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the left atrium which then pumps out the aorta. This picture is showing our pulmonary capillaries, okay? So we can see deoxygenated blood coming from pulmonary arteries. And this is one of those confusing ones that each time you're like, well, 
But we always thought arteries pumped oxygenated blood throughout the body. The best definite, and in the adult, and in basically after birth, all arteries do pump oxygenated blood, except this one. This is the exception. So that's why the best definition, in my opinion, of an artery is blood is a vessel that pump that takes blood away from the heart, a artery away. And the whole purpose of sending blood from the heart, from away from the heart to the lungs is to get oxygen. So this pulmonary arterial becomes pulmonary capillary, or capillary around these alveolar sacs because you breathe in oxygen. Oxygen diffuses into these pulmonary capillaries and that's how you get oxygenated blood through these pulmonary um, venules that come in through these pulmonary veins into the left atrium, left ventricle, out the aorta to the body. Hooray! So what are these two pictures and what's the deal? Well, this one I just added because I thought it was a really cool, it looks really cool in cross section. This is probably about um, T4 uh, level of the vertebral column. And we see this bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk into two pulmonary arteries. It looks really cool. I like that. And then this is showing histology of what the pulmonary capillaries kind of look like, where here are the alveolar space, shown here in green. And this is an alveolar septa, which is a endothelial cells and type 1 pneumocytes primarily. And the endothelial cells are what are forming the pulmonary capillary. Is that cool? Let me put the vena cava up here, pulmonary arteries up here, pulmonary capillaries, do, 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 up like that, pulmonary veins, and aorta. Now, so here we've got some of the definitions, and now let's put all these things together. So, transports oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. What transports oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium? Them's the pulmonary veins. Collects blood from tissues below the diaphragm. All veins below the diaphragm are deliver their blood eventually uh, uh, to the inferior vena cava. Only adult artery transporting deoxygenated blood. Only adult artery with deoxygenated blood. That's our pulmonary arteries. Shing! Right there. Only adult vein transporting oxygenated blood. There's our pulmonary veins as well. Okay. Delivers deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. What delivers deoxygenated blood to the right atrium? Well... Well, that's our superior vena cava for sure. Let's see if there's another one that, um, as I thought this one, well, we're going to see. Yeah, this one collects blood from tissues above the diaphragm. That's what the superior vena cava does as well. So um, both of these deliver deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. So maybe I'll stick that there like that. This one says, transports deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Well, that is going to be our pulmonary arteries. Okay. Delivers deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. Oh, there's two of them. That's why I said that. Okay. Both of those are bringing deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. Um, gives rise to left and right coronary arteries. This is a good one. Because the very first branches off the aorta, right at the beginning of the ascending aorta, before getting to the aortic arch, is where our left and right coronary arteries come off. So we take a look at this picture right here. There's the aortic valve, and there are the two coronary arteries. Okay. Um, CO2 diffuses from the blood to the alveoli, and oxygen diffuses from alveoli to the blood right here. Okay, so where the gas exchange, exchange between the respiratory system and cardiovascular system occur. And finally, location of angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. Now, this is one that I'm adding because this is something that's a nice bridge for doing physiology that deals with blood pressure regulation. But in the RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, ACE is the enzyme within the endothelial cells in the pulmonary capillaries in the house that Jack built that's going to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which is a very potent vasopressor. And that, my friends, is the paper puzzle 
from the heart.